Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Professional 2022 tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. In this video, we are going to take a look on some tips and tricks that can help you improve your efficiency and modeling performance on Autodesk robots. So to start with, I'm going to select my three-dimensional building design template and run it. Of course, I'm assuming that you are familiar with the GUI of Autodesk robot as well as being familiar with the basics of modeling beams and plates. So if you are unfamiliar, you should check out the videos linked above. So a disclaimer before starting. What you are going to see in this video are basically some snippets or parts of a bigger modeling process so in no way should this be viewed as a full modeling attempt of a structure from a to z rather i will be showing some situations where some useful tools could be used that could help step up your modeling performance in autodesk robot so you will see only snippets of possible situations that could arise while modeling so to start with i'm going to basically define me a trapezoidal slab and defining slabs was discussed before so by the power of video editing you will see right now a trapezoidal slab so our trapezoidal slab is defined as you can see it has a width of seven meters below and five meters on top and a length of 25 meters so okay it's also surrounded by four beams and let's say that we want to basically uh, do a quick modeling of this trapezoidal slab now to model this the slab seems to be very huge like having a span of 25 meters meters for main beams is basically not a good thing so what we would do is basically we would add some columns and add some secondary beams so if we do this in a very quick traditional way which is not what I advise you to do you would add basically some values in the y-axis like 5 10 15 and 20 apply that and then start trying to model your beams now this is not an easy task because well if you model something you see uh, it's not snapping it's very hard to snap. It's actually some, sometimes it snaps to the beam. And the problem with snapping to the grid is that the beam is not snapping to the other beam. And sometimes even this snap doesn't seem to work. So I don't know. This is one of the things that would basically make your modeling a little bit sluggish and slow. So how can we improve that? Now, first of all, I don't need those Y axes, but I will leave them anyway for helping purposes. So what you can do is basically you can use a command that is similar to the AutoCAD's array command. Well, first of all, I'm going to select my beam, go to edit, edit, move or copy. And now you don't actually apply the translation vector because if you apply it using your cursor, it will execute the command. So first of all, there are two options, copy and move, and there are the number of repetitions. Now, obviously, I want to have four copies of this. So my number of copies is four. The drag is something different, and I will talk about this later. For now, let's leave it without dragging. Now, I want to copy, not only move, so I'll just leave it for copy. And now I'm ready to input my translation vector. So basically, you can input 0, 5, 0, so 0 for dx. 5 for dy and 0 for dz or you can basically use your cursor like this and select a starting point drag your cursor and select an ending point and you can see before i click that the translation vector is 0, 050 0. if i click now it will execute the command and you can see that the beams have been created and this seems to be a problem because it seems that the beams are extending beyond the edge beam which actually doesn't make sense so is there a way to trim them if you go to edit there is a nice command that says trim so basically, it asks you to select the cutting edge, the edge that you want to trim to. So if you select this member now, you can now start trimming members by basically clicking on them. So how do you do that? First of all, you select the trimmed object. I need to zoom in. It trims it. And if you click here, it starts trimming. So it's really nice. Of course, if you click here, it trims to the inside. If you click here, it trims to the outside, but that's not what we want. And you can see this is, seems to be perfectly fine. And this was much faster than actually defining your grid points here, uh, especially if you have a huge number of elements that you want to draw. <clears throat> now to continue, uh, well, I want to continue the structure. So you can basically add some columns here. Now this is a very quick thing. If you add here a column and say, well, I want to have a reinforced concrete column. Now I'm just going to define me something very quickly with a height of, I don't know, 4.4 or 3 meters. So I can start adding columns like click. It's as simple as that. So, and that's it basically. You have a structure. There are some honorable mentions and commands like, for example, to trim something, uh, like, for example, to extend something, which is basically the opposite of trimming. There are some other commands that I will leave for you to explore. So the second tip I have for you is still related to the copying dialog and to do that I'm going to quickly define me a small frame using the power once again of video editing. So all right, as you can see I defined me a quick frame. Of course I didn't care about the releases or whatnot. It's just a quick steel frame because my point here is to show the power of 
uh, copying in robot so let's say that we have this frame and we want to basically copy it multiple times to cover a hanger or whatever it is we have seen in the previous segment that basically we can copy stuff so well let's do that edit edit move or copy and yes well you can basically copy it like one two three four five times and you can select like five and select the transition vector either graphically or you can type it in so if you do that you can see it was uh, repeated now this is this isn't really good because usually there are purlins that span the entire slab because in the end this is not how structures look like so usually you have like purlins spanning uh, perpendicular to those frames so to improve that, that let me show you what drag does in that command so let's select everything once again i want to copy it five times and this time I will enable the drag and well once again I'm selecting my vector and you can see well it seems to be getting better but there are some anomalies now what is drag doing what drag is doing is basically you see each of those nodes allow me to open the number of nodes you can see node 1 2 6 4 and 5 it drags those nodes along meaning that it draws members when you copy or move now first of all two things the first thing is well those Perlins are not enough because usually we use more than those to support a slab and the second thing is basically uh, We usually don't have beams on the ground like this is where concrete belongs now to understand this You need to understand how drag works. You see when I selected this I selected also the nodes You can see that the number of nodes selected are five and you can see that those are the node numbers So each one of those selected nodes gets dragged along so, for example, allow me to show you if, what happens if I select uh, only this half side. I mean, I'm just going to move my, f my view like this. And now I'm selecting only those members. So, my two nodes in the bottom are not selected. You can see that nodes are three out of five. Now, if you go again to edit, edit, move or copy, once again saying five and dragging along and basically adding this, you can basically see that the two bottom nodes have not been dragged, so everything seems to be fine. Now, well... This seems to be looking fine. However, usually we have more than those as perlins. So let's say that we want to add more of those. So I just undo everything. Now you see that Autodesk Robot drags any node you have defined and selected before you are going to the Edit and Copy menu. A good idea is to add more nodes to those members. Now how can I do that? Well, of course you can define nodes by saying, well, geometry node, or by basically selecting this node command here. However, Autodesk Robot has a perfect command called Divide, and if you click on that, you can basically divide any beam or any member you want into a multiple number of pieces be it n pieces or be it in distances and there are a bunch of other useful commands let's say that i want to divide each of those elements into basically n parts if i input three here i can basically start clicking my elements and you can see that those elements get divided however the element is still in one piece because tick here that is generate nodes without member or edge division if you want to split this into three actual pieces not only with nodes you can basically click on that I'm gonna keep it as one element and leave it as it is so now I have my nodes so if I once again select the upper members without the two bottom nodes and go to edit edit copy or move I want to basically copy it five times and of course I'm dragging it because I want to create parallels and if I click from here to here you can see that my structure has been dragged now of course those um, those sections that were used in dragging are basically too large so a good idea is to make them smaller now to do that basically you will have to go to the sections uh, command here and define your own section this is concrete section i don't want a concrete section i want a steel section and i want my section to be i don't know any c channel for now i'm not really interested in diving deep into what section i'm gonna use it's just a placeholder for now just to show you the idea so if you go to the left like this, this you can basically easily select the parallels holding the control key while you are selecting to add to your selection. And you can see that at the end of this operation, you can see that the parallels have been selected. And if you apply that, well, you have smaller sections which make more sense than the huge eye sections. That's how you can basically define a quick uh, hanger. Of course, it needs slabs. Of course, here there is a tick on horizontal slab. I don't want that because those things are not horizontal, as you can see. So I'll just click one, two, three, four, five, and you have your slab. Of course, you will repeat this process multiple times until you cover the entire thing. So that is how you can use the copy and paste command to the best of its abilities.
Now furthermore, you can see that I'm quite fast in manipulating my camera like this and zooming in and zooming out. Well, it shouldn't be a secret, but uh, the mouse wheel actually zooms in and out. And if you click on the mouse wheel, which is the middle mouse button now, you can pan. But how do I ac access the orbiting very quickly? You have here a middle box which can make an orbit here. Or you can basically click on any point on the cube even the home button on the cube and now your mouse starts to be used in orbiting so this is a very quick thing that i use to uh, navigate graphically in my model of course you can hit the escape button to get back another thing i like to mention auto scrobot is that there are keyboard so shortcuts to draw stuff so for example if you want to draw beams now there is a command called beams or you can simply hit on your keyboard bm in quick succession and you open the beam dialog bm for beams cl for columns SB for slabs or basically floors, LD for load definition, just in case you want to quickly define stuff without searching for the command. Now, those commands need you to get used to them, but uh, if you get used to them, this will elevate your modeling quite significantly. So another interesting fact is sometimes you have a, a model that looks like this with multiple beams and purlins and stuff, and you want to select, for example, all the beams that share a certain cross-section because for example now if you, if you have seen the previous sections i have uh, defined the purlins to have a certain c channel now let's say that i realize that my c channel is too large and i want to use a smaller c channel so of course i need to select them all basically so you will have to uh, select each group and hit the control key and start selecting like this which takes time of course and like this and then go to your cross section to find a new cross section like this and well it takes time as you can see especially the selection part so this is how you would do that if you want to make a smaller c channel of course i'm not now foc i'm not focusing on exactly what c channel it is i'm just proving the concept here so you can actually apply like this and have a smaller c channel this is okay-ish somehow for a small number of purlins like this however if you have a huge number and you want to select all the purlins that have the same cross section you can do this using the selection options. Now the selection options are a very powerful tool that you can use in selecting members that share a certain trait or a certain property. So for example, you can click on member selection like this, which opens for you a member selection. Now you can select the members according to something. You can group them according to an attribute, according to a group, or according to a geometry. Let's say we want all the stuff that is between x0 to x10, y0 to y10, and z0 to z10. If you basically apply that using the two arrows here, you will select this stuff. Now you can add to the selection and remove to the selection and even use some boolean operators using the AND. So for example, let's say I want to find all the purlins that are in this box. So I can, for example, first of all, select my members according to the location and then basically go to the attribute and select all the members that share a C6 times 8.2 cross section and AND the selection. So if you click on AND, now you are going to select everything that is in this geometry and shares this cross section. So as you see, I'm not interested in selecting the purlins only in this region. I'm, I'm interested in selecting the purlins everywhere. So I'm just going to hit the cross section that I have here and select the double arrow like this. So select everything, which means basically that I select all the purlins and I can use this selection to manipulate whatever things I want here. All right. So this is basically what I wanted to talk about selecting members. There is also ability to group stuff and I will talk, the, talk about grouping in this video, but in the later stage of this video. Now, let's say we want to change the nodes that are fixed to pins, for example. So a way graphically to do this is basically to go to the right and select everything like this. But you have to be very careful because you see I'm actually selecting more than the base uh, nodes. And to show you that, well, what happens if I basically add a pin now and you will see that, well, the base and the one above it gets pinned. So sometimes it's not really easy to graphically select all the nodes that you're intending to select. So I'll just quickly undo whatever I've done to repeat my point. Okay, and after undoing what I've done, I want to select only the nodes that are fixed support because I changed my mind and I want my supports to be pinned support instead of fixed support. So you can basically go to the node selection. Now the same thing applies to the the same thing that applies to the members applied to the nodes. You can select the nodes in the region. You can and so basically add another condition to that selection you can add to the selection you can remove from the selection it's good to filter and play around with this you can even invert your selection by the way 
uh, this is a shortcut if you click on nodes you will actually only activate a filter called nodes now you can see there are multiple filters you can go back to your member filter to your panel filter there is a lot of filters you can use i'll just use the node filter for now because i'm interested in selecting the nodes so if you go to the attribute uh, region in this node selection i want to have all the nodes that are fixed if you click on fixed and select all you can see i'm selecting 12 and well basically if i now change while my selection is active if I now change my support from fixed to pinned and apply, you can see that all my supports got pinned exactly as I want. The next thing I want to discuss is grouping stuff together. And this is important because you can easily select groups in future tasks like designing groups, selecting groups, uh, modifying groups together. So grouping is a really nice feature in robot and to actually start grouping, you should access the group tab that is in the object inspector. And you can see in the group folders, there are absolutely no groups. So you can basically add a group by selecting, first of all, the group members. So let's say you want to select the frames only to be a group. If I say here, create a group out of the selection, if you click on that, so now I generated groups out of my selections. If you go to group folders and click on that, you can see that there is a new group members, basically of members and new group of nodes. And you can see that those list the nodes and the members. Now you can actually select the group or the members in that group by basically going to member selection, for example, and choosing a certain group and basically double arrows and you can see the group got selected. This is good for quick selection. Well, one extra thing to help you see groups and different sections, and of course you have seen this on, on fancy robot models all over the place on Google, is basically to have some colors in that to be able to see sections according to colors and so on. So to do that, you can actually right click Go to display, you can see that on members, you can basically differentiate between different sections by color by clicking on that and saying apply. And you can see, I mean, if I enable my sections, you can see that each section got its own unique color. That's not all, because you can actually also differentiate between groups. So if you go to mark with color, you can see that instead of sections legend by colors, you can actually apply groups legend by colors. And you can see that you have at least this one is grouped. Now this is still not grouped and that's why it has a default color. Of course, you can see that black means new group members. This is a group that we have done here. And we can add more groups by basically selecting, for example, those purlins. Okay, so now I have my purlins. If I go now create a group out of the selection, well, I have a new group, as you can see. Well, you can basically remove that. And if you want to select your members in that group, you can basically go to member selection. Uh, select groups and say well I want my new group you can basically click on that and add the double arrows like this now this is basically some strange names for groups but I'll just take it I'm not actually going to discuss different naming conventions all right so you can even uh, show the colors of that group by right clicking going to display going to mark with colors and well add group legend by color if you apply that you can see now you see that both groups have the same color, which is kind of odd. It's usually more beneficial to have two different colors for two different groups. So how can you modify or how can you even edit the color that the group is using to represent itself? So to change the color that each group is using, well, even in the selection, you can do that. Uh, if you go to group and double click on each one, you can see that you can access the group definition and you can even rename it if you want. You can actually choose a red color, for example, and say accept if you basically refresh your view say display mark with colors groups legend by color if you click on that you can see now that well there are two groups one of them is in red and one of them is in black it's also good to hide some groups because for example you want to uh, add a bracing a cross bracing or something in that frame and you can kind of see that the purlins are somehow in the way. Now, you're not going to delete your purlins because, I mean, we have uh, invested some time in modeling them, but you want to basically hide this stuff. So a good way of doing that is, first of all, where is the group of the purlins? Now, I didn't, and I didn't name a sensible name for that, but I know that this is the group of the purlins. You can basically set the group to be inactive and then ask robot to hide the inactive groups. And now suddenly you have a very good clear view about what you want to do and you can easily access any part on those frames once you're done you can basically reactivate uh, the group and show everything and well that's how you can basically do that now the last thing i want to cover is a question from our subscriber Ni Sapai. 
I hope that I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And he was asking about the ability to draw uh, bars using node numbers instead of node coordinates. Now to do that, well, I'm just gonna quickly close this project. I will just start a new project using the building design again. If you want to draw stuff, you draw beams, you click on a beam and you see that if you move your cursor, the beam is refreshing its starting coordinate. And if you click on that, you see the beam is refreshing its ending coordinate. So until now, this seems to be fantastic. And if you click two points, you can see that robot automatically, automatically defines two nodes. Now, maybe you are interested in defining a bar between two predefined nodes. Now, why would you do that? Because maybe you know the node numbers, but it's very hard for you to reach those node numbers to select those nodes because there is a lot of elements in your robot model. Or there might be other reasons why you want basically to tell robot to connect a line between node number three and node number four. Now, unfortunately, if you click on beam like this or even member on a or any line drawing tool in robot, if you say three and four, it doesn't allow you to add anything. It doesn't recognize this because it wants you to give it coordinates. It doesn't want you to give it node numbers. Now there are two options to do that. The graphical, not professional way and the professional way that is based on tables. So the graphical unprofessional way needs you to draw a beam on any space you can actually access like this, for example. So I drew me a dummy beam and now selecting the dummy beam and going to its properties, you can see that there is a node one and node two and you can actually edit this. So if you double click on the node one, which is the starting node and say three and double click on the ending node, which is six and say four and hit the enter key, you can see that my beam now connects the two nodes that I'm targeting. However, you can see that there are some leftovers, which is node number five and node number six and you shall delete them. You should not forget deleting them. Now, this is not a professional way of doing so. So deleting everything, a more professional way of doing so is, well, basically using tables. So let's say that I want to define not only, not only members, but even nodes using tables. Now, first of all, I want to define nodes using very simple GUI in the beginning, just to show you the principle. I have two nodes now, and I want to define a member that passes through those two nodes by specifying the node numbers. Now, I told you before that this command doesn't do that. So to do that, you go to view tables. And you can see that robot asks you what kind of table do you want to open. Now I want to open my member table because those bars are members. If you click on that, you can see that your member table is entirely uh, empty. This is like a secondary way of defining members in Autodesk Robot. I'm going to define a member by basically filling the values. So my node one is basically node number one, the serial number of it. My node two is basically the serial number of my second node, which is two. Uh, the section I want to use is steel section. So I click on that and select seal. Sometimes robot will not cooperate. Uh, and if it doesn't cooperate, it seems that robot chooses timber as its default material. So the first thing you should do is to choose steel. You can actually write STEE -E or basically select steel from the drop down. Once you select the material, you go back to the section and now you can select a section that is appropriate to steel and it works. The rest is about the gamma angle and the type. The type here is it's basically a beam and the object type is, well, you guessed it, it's a beam. So if you finish editing this, you can close the table now and you can see that you have a beam perfectly defined exactly as you want to be. So yes, you can define beams using node numbers. However, it's a little bit primitive. You cannot simply define beams using node numbers in this command. You have to go to either defining a dummy beam or using the tables to define your member. Now, taking the question of our dear subscriber one step further, you can actually even define nodes using this table. So for example, if you go to uh, view tables and go to the node table now and say, okay, well, you can see that those are the two nodes I have defined. And you can, if I define, I can define a new node by hitting, for example, 12 and five and in the Z zero. And I can, even, I can even support them by the way, but I will just leave it without support. Now I have just defined a node. You hit close. Now it seems that you cannot see the third node. That's because you are at Z equals three. If you go to Z equals zero, you see your third, third node. To make more sense of that, well, if you go to your view, you see all your three nodes and you can open the node numbers to actually visualize them. All right, so that's it. Uh, that's basically some tips and tricks that can help you to improve your modeling on Autodesk Robot and increase your modeling speed and efficiency. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed the video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. It helps a lot. This is the Civil Engineering Essential Channel, and we will catch you on the next video.